Uh, Janet uh, McDougall, Janet joined Yes I Can Nursery uh, in 1994 and has been serving as the Executive Director of its charitable organization since 1996. She spearheads unique programs at Yes I Can which are known for exceptional work with preschoolers with autism including successful inclusion. Janet has received numerous awards for excellence and dedication to her, in her profession such as the City of Toronto's Maria DeWitt Award, the Best Local Hero Award by the North Toronto Post and she is a recipient of a Prime Minister's Award. Janet is an active member serving the community in a variety of capacities such as a sitting member on the Ontario Early Years Advisory Committee, a past chair of kids, member of the inaugural governance board of the Georgian Bay General Hospital, consulted in, develop, in developing the City of Toronto's preschool criteria for best practices, a member of the advisory board for the School of Early Childhood Education at Seneca College, and a past president of the Simcoe County Children's Age Society Board. Uh, so Janet, uh, you know, please come up and share your wisdom. I'm five feet tall, I'm not going to go behind there. <laughs> Good morning, bonjour, Ani. I'm the on the ground person today, and I welcome your comments and questions afterwards. Can you hear me okay? So Yes I Can Nursery School has two sites, both of them in North York, one at Hogs Hollow and one at Young and Fairlawn. We are a not-for-profit registered charity and we're 23 years young. Everybody in our team has the same role. We all work with the children that arrive on our doorsteps. We welcome little ones from 18 months of age up to age six or seven. We have a Teeny Two program. We have integrated nursery school programs that we're very proud of because really when you have autism, the biggest thing that you want to have is a friend. So we work on social communication. We also have classes that are done at various levels for children that do learn differently, specifically children that are on the autism spectrum. I do believe we are the only ones in the GTA that offer these programs. They're called Yes I Can Communicate. And we have them at a junior level, that's the limp picker off the floor who really isn't able to participate in an activity, can barely handle standing beside a friend for peer play, lots of sensory issues. The next level would be the senior communication class. That's somebody who can maybe make a request. They learn in a different way than the ones that are at the junior level. And then we have our senior class, and that is uh, a social skills class. Yes, I can build my social skills. All these classes are done on a part-time basis. So if you're a junior learner, you would come on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning for your morning class with the expectation that in the afternoon and on Saturday and Sunday, your family would then involve you in community programs where you could practice the skills that you've learned in the junior communication class. We don't put out scissors. There's no hopping on one foot. We work on social communication and school readiness. So circle time in September is about 12 seconds long. By about now we're up to 10 minutes and we use an awful lot of visuals. We use visuals for everything. The teachers that come to Yes I Can, part of their wardrobe is a lanyard and on that lanyard is a stop sign, a tidy up, sit nicely, washroom, turn taking and they wear these pictures on their body so they can support the children that are needing to tidy up, needing to line up at the door, going to the washroom. It's just part of what we do. I was at uh, the grocery store in Midland the other day and they had a new contraption there to help serve nuts. So I'm looking at this and I'm, thinking, I'm smiling to myself. I think, Here's a picture. Choose a bag Put the bag under the lever, so the word and the picture is there. Pull the lever, tie the bag. And I thought, wow, that's pretty smart. They were not expecting a busload of kids with autism to come in to do that. This was helping us figure out how to get through this particular process. <coughs> and that is how we do it at Yes I Can. We have visual schedules for everything. We break down the tasks. We have, if you're going to paint, we have a picture out that shows you how you're going to do this activity when you get to the activity. So those are the specialized classes, but the integrated classes where I really think we have the most pride. Because in our integrated classes, we say 20%, but 
20-25% of the children that are in the integrated classes are children that learn differently and that have autism. So in a classroom of 24, 20% 20 of that group, you're going to maybe, we may have six or eight children that are, that are in that class. We also run a, a summer camp program and we do a combination of integration in the morning. We actually import some of our integration from kids from Children's Aid Society that don't have a chance to go to camp or from Thorncliffe Neighborhood Center, kids that can't afford to go to camp. So we give free camps, we get neurotypically developing children to come so that they can learn and play with the children that have autism. We have an enriched kindergarten class and that kindergarten class is, welcomes children that are in JK or in SK. Many families choose to send their children to us instead of the public school system but also to supplement. So since, the, uh, since our claim to fame really is that inclusion, I'm going to ask your indulgence and I'm going to tell you a story and hopefully you can visualize it. One of the programs we have at Yes I Can is called Play Haven. It's funded by the government and it's for children that are medically fragile. So we had this little girl who was ready to come out of that medically fragile program. Her name was Clara. Clara has autism, a syndrome, she was a bum shuffler. She had a heart condition. She had two heart operations during the course of the time that she was with us. She looked very different. Her eyes are very close together. She had wispy blonde hair, very sort of senior citizen sort of looking. And she had a trach. She was nonverbal. So Claire was ready to graduate from the Play Haven program and I brought Daddy upstairs to see the classroom for the nursery school. And I, mommy, mom was already on board. So dad comes up, he takes a look around, and it was arts and sensory time. Double-sided easels, eight kids painting, 24 children in the room all around, kids doing Play-Doh, it was busy. So Roger looks at me and he says, Claire can't come here. I said, how come? And he goes, because she can't stand up. I suppose she can't stand up today but we'll bring the painting to the floor for her until she's ready to stand up at the easel. I got him. So September rolls around and Clara arrives in the classroom. I was a little nervous, but I thought, okay, this is a good test. We're gonna teach the children spatial relations. I didn't want Clara being stepped on. So she was still a bump shuffler. Two or three weeks later, it was music time, 24 little people around the music circle, and the teacher says to a neurotypically developing child from the community, Tyler, it's your turn to pick a song. So up comes Tyler, and on the songboard choice, he chooses Sandy Boy and Sandy Girl. If anybody knows that song, you need a partner and you dance. So who do you want to choose to dance with you, Tyler? I choose Clara. Okay, the teacher says, Clara, come on up. There are bum shuffles into the middle of the circle. Teacher whispers to Tyler, why don't you get down on your knees? Down he goes, and he reaches up. He takes her wee hands, and everybody sings and claps, and Clara is just beaming. That was great. A couple weeks later, Tyler, uh, Clara's mom comes running to me. Oh, Janet, I said, what's wrong? Clara got invited to Tyler's birthday party. I said, fabulous, go to Mastermind, get a gift, put her in a nice outfit, and ask mom whether it's a drop off or does she need an extra set of hands for the party. That was Clara's beginning on the birthday circuit. So we're gonna fast forward now a couple of years to closing ceremonies, a hot June day. The chapel is full, we're in a church, 200, 250 people. And as we always do, we have a valedictorian. I am chosen Tyler, of course. So Tyler would stand up and he would give a few words. Tyler stood up and said, I've been at Yes I Can for four years. And the very best thing about Yes I Can is, this is where I met my best friend, Clara. With this unprompted, Clara comes out of the pew. She's now walking. She shuffles up with her AFOs, they have a hug, she puts her finger on her tray and says, thank you. We have all that we need. We just need to believe. Any questions? <laughs> I 
I think from my perspective, just listening to what you're saying and how you interact with the kids, I mean, how much of what Janet's already doing reflects a lot of the CBT work that psychologists and EAs would be implementing uh, in, in the other regions, in Hamilton and, and in Singapore? It sounds like CBT to me. I mean, there certainly may be some uh, similarities in the kind of skills that, that get used for sure. Um, so, I mean, there would certainly be some overlap. Uh, I mean, I think some of the CPT strategies are, are, are a little bit different and a bit more targeted, um, but certainly some of the strategies just in terms of helping one regulate and, and do all that kind of thing would be quite similar. Yeah. <coughs> There's no comment. I uh, just wanted to let you know we do have some of the visuals here and what we use and the lanyard that the teachers wear. So if you do want to see it, you can come over and have a look at it at any point. Okay? Thanks, Karen. Do we need a oh, there we go. I guess this is a comment and a question. It seems to me that the, the main ingredient of your success there was all of the kindness of, of everyone involved. And it, it kind of spun out from there among the community. Was, is there any kind of curriculum for kindness uh, embedded in the Yes I Can program? And I, I do mean that specifically because it's, it's something that we do need to mentor in our young people. And how are you doing that? So when somebody wants to come to Yes I Can as a, as a prospective parent, they can't register online. You know, as a nursery school, you can go online and you can fill in applications and come. Just show up. We don't do that. We insist that every prospective parent comes and has a visit at the nursery school and we say come and see us at our worst because you know what somebody said the trustee said child lying on the floor happens often you know for sure they need it they're timing out they're they're disengaged so come and see us at, a, at our worst and see the strategies that we do and that inclusive piece including the children that have special needs but we're also including the parents and graduation day yes i can there's more tears from the parents than it is from the kids because they're now and i hate to say it tdsb those parents are now going into a world that is not the same it is not welcoming as welcoming as what they've been used to it's not as nurturing the teachers in the classroom there's levels of teachers in the classroom if you come to my nursery school Everybody looks the same. We all work with the kids. We all try and figure out this little guy's having sensory issues. We found out when we said, get comfortable, he took his shoes and socks off. Bingo, that's it. You know, so we put grass out for him now when he comes into the classroom. So it's just, I think it radiates from the team to the children and to the parents. I, I, and we don't teach it necessarily. I think we are it. it it's inside of us. And we look at somebody, somebody said to me, does that little guy have autism? I can't remember that information's in his file. We're just gonna try and figure out what works here today, you know? I just wanted to comment. I mean, I think that's an important point that you're making. Um, I mean, I think what you're doing is wonderful in terms of inclusiveness of the children. Um, certainly some research has shown that kids with ASD in inclusive programs uh, certainly have a lot more social isolation, there's more bullying, so there's certainly a lot of negative consequences. So I think your point is a good one in terms of how do we now approach the system in terms of inclusiveness of all children with all kinds of learning difficulties and how do we build that into our school system and again, to the point to the gentleman earlier who talked about the child who didn't speak um, English, um, but communicating with him in Russian, I mean, here's a child who really wanted to connect with somebody. So again, really thinking about this as an issue and how do we, how do we bring this into the school system so that all kids are included? I think it's an important point. And look at, I mean, look at the difference in terms of that little girl. Um, now having a best friend, I mean, that's huge. A lot of the kids just want a friend. And what a difference that makes, not just for kids with disabilities, but for all kids to have somebody that makes an impact on their lives. And Tyler's gonna be CEO of a company one day. And he's gonna remember Flara. And he's gonna be far more welcoming for employment opportunities within his business. So it's really, the inclusion isn't just good for the children with special needs. I think as a, as a society, it's our duty and our obligation. We all belong. We are one Ontario. We are belonging together. So we need to figure out how to make it work. Okay. <laughs>